the 55th annual Alfred I. DuPont Columbia University Awards in television and radio journalism. From Law Memorial Library on the campus of Columbia University in New York City, here is your host, Jane Pauley. Our next presenter is John Martin, national correspondent for ABC News. John. Thank you, Jane. The winners of this category have to be tough. Investigative reporters on local television are a vanishing breed. And not so long ago, it was different. Stations with strong news departments used teams of reporters to search out abuses of power and abuses of the public trust. And the reporters got the time and the resources to do their work properly. Often they saw the ratings go up, as did public respect. But something is changing. After more than 30 years as a newspaper reporter and editor and as a local television reporter and a network correspondent, I can tell you that there are mounting pressures working against investigative reporting. Lately, it's gotten more intense. But I can also tell you that there are many brave people down in the trenches and up in the management suites who understand those pressures and who strive to earn the public trust, and they do earn it. What's troubling is that some news organizations now avoid investigative efforts, not only because of the time and money required, but increasingly because of the fear and the reality of lawsuits which makes our next winners all the more worthy of their batons. WFAA-TV in Dallas regularly assigns senior reporter Robert Riggs and field producer P.J. Ward to cover investigative stories full-time. In 1995, they uncovered a trail of large payments to a member of the Dallas Independent School Board from an insurance agent who provided school insurance and pension policies. The WFAA team examined more than 4,000 pages of documents and interviewed more than 250 people. After their investigation, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Dallas began its own six-month investigation. This ended in a 42-count federal indictment of the board member. He resigned from the Dallas School Board, but was ultimately acquitted of the charges. Now, we cannot televise the prize work tonight of Robert Riggs and WFAA. That's because the school board member has filed suit against WFAA, the station that we honor. When lawsuits are filed, the stories in question become radioactive in a way, not to be touched, or not to be republished or rebroadcast until the issue is resolved. In the end, we all know the truth will out. WFAA is defending itself against this lawsuit, and the merits will be decided elsewhere. But let us resolve tonight, as journalists and citizens, never to be intimidated or diverted from pursuing the truth. And so, in that spirit, a silver baton goes to WFAA-TV Dallas and reporter Robert Riggs for their uncompromising coverage. Robert? The, tr the truth of this story has never been challenged, even by the people that are suing us. And it has brought about major reforms in the way the Dallas School District does business. And finally, the voices of African American children in this district who make up this predominantly minority district are being heard. Thank you. That wouldn't be possible without the leadership at the top, and that includes John Miller, our news director at WFAA, the president of the station, Kathy Creaney, and uh, at the corporate level, Marty Haig. I also want to thank P.J. Ward, the producer, Jesus Hernandez, the videotape editor, and the entire news staff. It's a place that is a dream for every reporter to work. And finally, I want to thank my wife, and two children for their understanding for the missed ballet recitals and tennis matches. Thank you. <laughs>